Today I'm going to be showing you why you should be using this little guide to upgrade your MacBook Pro. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider scrolling down and pressing the subscribe button and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac tutorials. So if you've been a MacBook Pro user for a while, you'll know how quick and easy it is to completely fill up your internal storage with games and videos and files. If you do run out of space, there is actually no way to upgrade the internal storage of your MacBook. And if you wanted more internal storage, well, tough luck. You'd either have to go ahead and buy a completely new MacBook Pro or go back in time and make sure that you selected the correct amount of storage and you'll have to pay the huge prices that Apple charges. If you want to add 500 gigabytes of storage, you're going to have to pay $200 for it. But what if I told you there is now a solution which is going to let you upgrade your storage internally and it's going to cost you a whole lot less than what Apple charge. In steps the Jet Drive Lite 330. And this is a storage accessory that's been designed for the Apple Silicon Mac, specifically the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. So this device fits into your SD card slot of your your MacBook Pro and the main selling point is that it sits completely flush. So this means that there is no danger of the card being knocked out and once you've installed it it basically becomes a permanent addition to your MacBook Pro. So most of you might be thinking that solid state drives are going to do a very similar job and they're also going to run much faster and the main problem with solid state drives like this is that you have to have it attached to the side of the computer at all times. It means that you can't just shut down your MacBook Pro throw it in the bag you have to make sure that you eject the drive and then that you pull it out. Secondly if the cable is slightly loose then it means that you might accidentally eject the drive in the middle of using it and you might corrupt your data as well. And there are definitely situations where you might want to use an external solid state drive instead of the jet drive. But today I'm going to be going over some use cases and also we're going to benchmark the two types of drives and we're also going to be testing the load speeds of games as well. If you're interested in checking out the jet drive today then please make sure to scroll down and click on the affiliate links at the top of the description. If you make a purchase you'll be helping to support my channel and the content that I create. So now we're going to do some read write benchmarking of each of the three types of devices and as you can see the jet drive which is on the right doesn't even come close to the internal solid state drive or the external USB drive that I have installed. So what I'm going to do now is a game copy test. So I've got my folder here I'm going to copy it over to the jet drive light. Here it's estimating that it's going to take about 32 minutes So now I'm going to do the same test for the solid state drive. As you can see we have an estimated time of two minutes. Here we can see the write speed is going at around 832 megabytes per second. It seems like it's going nearly 10 times faster than the jet drive light. So the numbers make it look like the jet drive is going to perform orders of magnitude slower but in reality if you're actually using it in real world conditions you can actually do lots of things from the jet drive including gaming. Here we're running GTA 5 through crossover on the M1 Max chip and there are no issues or stutters with the actual frame rate and it runs fantastically directly off the SD card in the jet drive. Here I'm doing a campaign loading test in GTA 5 single player and you'd be surprised to see that there's actually very little difference between the internal, external and jet drive itself. And this is only 10% slower than the internal solid state drive which has a theoretical maximum speed which is much higher than the jet drive. So it's interesting to see that this device has a maximum read speed of 95 megabytes per second and a write speed of 75 megabytes per second. That's because the new MacBook Pros can actually run at UHS-2 which is much faster than what the jet drive can offer. So having a jet drive that could reach say 312 megabytes per second sounds nice but it doesn't necessarily offer any actual benefit over the current version that we have today. The jet drive Lite 330 is a perfect place to store large files like big games, your Steam library, loads of videos and media files too. Anything that doesn't require very fast read or write speeds. You're not going to be editing 4K video on this, but for virtually everything else this is going to be the perfect place to store it. This is especially true because not only do the sizes start from 256 gigabytes, but you can also expand it up to one terabyte and it's only going to cost you $190. So I definitely recommend getting a jet drive in order to expand the storage on your MacBook Pro. I can't really think of many downsides. The only one I can think of is that if you're going to be using this long term then it means that your SD card slot is going to be occupied the entire time. Then you might need to invest in one of these USB-C hubs and this contains an extra SD card reader so you don't have to disconnect the jet drive every time you want to download photos from your camera. So if you do decide to buy one of these then please make sure to use one of the affiliate links at the top of the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please like, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.